All right, hey guys, so we've got Jess here, and now we're gonna go over, I'm gonna basically just coach her through a, a conventional deadlift technique um, to make sure she's doing it the most efficiently that she can, and she, yeah, she's got really good technique. Um, so follow along and use this to tweak your own technique with your deadlift. Um, so first of all, not, not a necessity, but Jess has got converse shoes on and the, the benefit to having these is it's basically a, a smaller heel on the shoe um, which essentially if you've got a big spongy heel it's just going to you know limit your ability to be able to put force into the floor and lift a heavier weight um, so you know a flatter shoe is going to create more foot stability etc etc which is a beneficial thing get you to step back for a second so how we'll find foot position for a conventional deadlift is we want to just find what is the most natural foot position there possibly is. Um, for some people, your, slow, your toes will be slightly pointed out. For some people, you'll be dead straight. Um, it just wants to be what's the natural alignment for you and that's the, that's the position we want to pull from. So a good way to do it is just to march up and down on the spot, look straight ahead, and don't think about altering, just go natural where your feet, feet land. All right, and then just stop. Cool, and don't, when you stop, don't take a step back out to where you normally stand, just, just notice where your feet naturally stand. Mine are a little bit pointing out. Jess's are pretty damn straight, they're pretty close. That, see your foot position? That's where you're gonna pull from. Um, so from there, obviously you've got a bar. When you're deadlifting with, a, with an Olympic bar, you wanna make sure you've got the proper sized weight plates so that the bar is the, the right distance from the floor. Um, if the bar's, you know, if you're using those small little weight plates and the bar's really close to the floor, basically it's just gonna make you, you have to hinge down further to the ground. And if you don't have the correct hamstring flexibility, etc., it's gonna put, you know, be a lot more likely to put your lower back in a flex position. Um, and it's just gonna be harder to be able to get a good technique, have the mobility, flexibility, etc., to get in that position. So this is the best setup to be using, an Olympic bar with the proper size weight plates. Um, so you've got your foot position. Now you're gonna step into the bar and you want to step all the way in so that the bar is over your, the bows of your shoelaces and pretty much your, your shins are going to be touching the bar so you pretty much yeah you want your shins to be touching the bar from there a good way to do it is because we want to have our weight not in our toes sort of more in the say center slash back of our foot what you can do to get in a good position and and to get in the good bottom position is lift your toes off the ground and then from there, hinge down and, hold, and just hold onto the bar. Cool, that looks pretty good. Let's, so with your hand grip, you wanna be on the rough part of the bar, or at least some on the rough, rough part of the bar, just outside your, your legs. So from there, you wanna grip on really tight to the bar, and you're gonna take the slack out of the bar. So that's when you hear that little click. Yep, hear that little click relax and go again click I don't know if you can hear that on the microphone but there's a little click when she takes slack out of the bar um, so take the slack out of the bar pick your chest up and sort of lean back a little bit brilliant and put so much tension on the bar that you're almost going to lift it well you just did and that was actually really good the reason why the technique was actually quite good then was because she had so much tension on the bar she'd found her sort of center position um, and she just went straight up. Her hips went straight through, her shoulders went straight up, and did you feel how smooth that was? Yeah. Versus if you rush it, and if the bar's a little bit further forward, you'll, you'll find, you know, you'll do things like your hips will shoot up, and you know, you have to re-correct. Um, but okay, cool, so that was really good. So let's go again. So a really good thing to do to start with is just to actually get in this bottom position, not actually lift the bar, but let's go again. So take the slack of the bar, Yep, so grip on tight, really tight. Really tighten your lats. Cool, brace your core, pick your chest up and take tension on the bar. Lean back a little bit. Brilliant, put so much tension on it, just keep tension on there. Don't actually lift it, keep it, keep it. Real tight grip, really tight lats, bracing. Lots of tension. And then just, oh, you lifted it, but cool. But you can even just stay in that position and just get really familiar with that bottom position um, because that's essentially where you want to lift from every time, that exact same bottom position. 
Cool, so that, that's actually looking quite good. So let's go again. So really tight grip. You want white knuckles. Having a tight grip is going to have an irritation effect through your forearm, into your bicep, tricep, into your shoulder, even into your core. So really tight grip is going to help you create lots of tension in your body, which is what we want. So tight grip, chest up, leaning back a little bit, pushing your knees out against your arms. And then from there, put tension, 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 lift. Cool. Um, you feel how you shifted a little bit then? Yeah. yeah. So what you want to do is when you lift it is put, I think, tension, 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 and let that be the thing that starts your lifting. It's not, it shouldn't, when you lift, it shouldn't be something where you, you jolt to lift. It should be tension, 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 all right, straight up and just sort of carry through the, the beginning of the lift that you've just started lifting from getting so much tension on the bar um, and carrying through from there. Make sense? All right, so let's let's just do that now. So so really tight grip and just think tight lats, tight core, knees out against your arms, really picking your chest up. So chest up and lean back. And then just tension, tension, tension and just keep putting ten more tension until you start lifting it and then just drive through. Cool, good one. Let's do three of those now. So really tight. Tension until it starts lifting. Well, there you go, that's looking a lot better. Cool. One more. Cool. How's that feel? It's, it's, but you're doing it quite easy. Like it feels heavy because you've got a lot of tension through your body. Um, but does it feel better than how you had been doing it previously when you were just bending down and picking the bar up and your hips were shooting up and your back was hurting and yeah. Does it feel, it might not feel easier than that, but does it feel like you lift it smoother and easier and yeah. yeah. You'd be able to lift heavier than that because you're so tight, yeah. Um, all right, cool. I suppose some common errors that people will do, like if you if you get it right, like Jess has just now, it should be pretty smooth. Some of the biggest errors, errors people make are basically rushing the bottom position. If you think about any lift, you really wanna have the same bottom position, the same ascent, the same top position, and the same descent for every repetition. If you're rushing, and one rep's coming from you know the right position, the next rep's coming a little bit forward, next rep's coming a little bit too far back, whatever else, your reps are gonna look all over the place, they're gonna not be consistent, they're gonna be different each time. Um, so I think you know, a real big key is, is making sure you get that bottom position right every time, um, and you don't just lift. You don't just lift the bar, you actually get tension on the bar, so much tension until it starts lifting, and then you draw, you just finish the finish the lift through. Um, all right, cool. Let's just do one more set of three, and just I'm just going to let you do it with what we've talked about. Chest up, tension. Cool. How'd that feel? Good. Could you feel the first rep? You put enough tension on it and you lifted it and then it, it went really smooth, but the second two, you jolted a little bit at the bottom and you lost your hips very minutely, but a little bit. Could you feel that? Okay. So, yeah, so just on those last two reps, you should have just copy the first one, just more tension, tension, tension. All right, so that's really, that's looking pretty good. Um, the next thing we want to talk about is the top position. So the top position is basically just going to be a full lockout. So from your bottom, 
you're gonna basically you want to come up you want your shoulders to come straight up and your hips to come straight through we don't want any shooting or changing or you know uh, movement there we want it to be as smooth as possible which Jess is looking pretty good now um, top position is basically just going to be a knee lock hip lock so squeeze your quads squeeze your glutes keep you know you don't want to overextend you don't want to arch your back you want your core to be really locked on um, like he's explained in the core breathing and bracing module so you want rib and pelvis alignment through this whole thing so it's going to be rib and pelvis alignment hip, shoulders straight up hips straight through bang lock finish Control back down to your start position. Tight, tension, up, straight through, hip just clicked. But yeah, basically lock your quads, lock your glutes, really solid lock out of the top, um, and that's your top position. So let's just do one more set and have a look at that top position. So, so a really good focus for you would be just to try and keep every rep like that first one where you got tension, tension, tension until it started lifting and then you, drop, you finish the lift. Um, the other thing is just going to be quads, glutes, really lock out and you know basically drive your hips into the bar, squeeze your glutes hard, lock your quads out. Yeah. Lock. Cool. Looking good. Good lock. A little bit rushed at the bottom. Let's just go one more. We'll finish here, but let's just do one more perfect rep. So it's looking quite good. Just think tension at the bottom before you lift and then hard lock out at the top. Tension, tension, tension. Lock out. Brilliant. All right. Well done. Um, so that's a conventional deadlift. Enjoy.